right. Welcome, everybody. My name is Jody Medler. I'm the grassroots manager um, here at the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network. And um, just to get quick and get be quick and get started, I'm going to introduce um, Kristen Page Nye. She's our government relations director, and she's going to kick it off. Great. Well, thank you for joining us and. Um, I, we hope this is beneficial for those who are going to watch the recording as well. Um, Kristen and I, Government Relations Director, and have been with the American Cancer Society and the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network for 20 years now. And um, one of my favorite things to do is to um, be joined with volunteers and in other staff partners on our cancer action day when we can really really humanize the issues that we're working on and have our elected um, officials see the the people um, who are policies the policies that they decide upon um, who they impact and how they can help fight help us fight cancer um, my role today is to just give a little bit of an update on the legislative session and specifically on our two priorities that we're going to be talking about during Cancer Action Day with um, select uh, legislators in both the House and the Senate. And this is a very unique um, session in that we are not going to be working proactively on a specific piece of legislation. We're actually um, trying to defend some great work that we have done over the years. Um, we're actually going to be defending funding for the tobacco use prevention program and asking for support, not to just keep a, a government program afloat, but a program that is proven effective be and is such a great use of investment by the state of Montana. And the second ask is going to be to help us protect all of the local work that has already happened and that needs to happen um, to protect communities against the harms of, of tobacco. There's several different policies we've worked on over the years to um, expand the Clean Indoor Air Act to include e-cigarettes and other electronic products so that when people are indoors um, in a public setting or in a workplace that they're not not only not exposed to secondhand smoke but the aerosol emitted emitted off of e-cigarettes as well. So those are really the two um, the the two policies that we're going to work on. So let me tell you just a little bit about the tobacco use prevention program. Um, but 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 first, uh, I want to remind folks I'm giving you background information. Um, we're going to provide you fact sheets and um, the actual ask. But just remember one thing. You're not paid professional lobbyists. We don't expect you to be experts in this issue. Um, What's really, really important is that you can articulate what our ask is and that you can relate it to you can you can relate it to yourself and the, the legislator, um, making it meaningful for them so that they can understand why they why we have our position and that hopefully we can convince them to support our position. So let's talk about the tobacco use prevention program. This program has been around for years, um, but in 1999, the state of Montana settled a, a lawsuit with the, the, larger, the larger tobacco companies. It's called the Tobacco Master Settlement. And in that, um, it was discovered that millions, hundreds of millions of dollars of damages were caused by tobacco use. And, that um, the state of Montana needed to start investing in ways that we prevent um, addiction to tobacco. And so um, over the years, we have helped through the legislature and through 
citizens initiative to secure part of those annual payments for a tobacco prevention program that's based on a, a evidence based um, model. And that program really took off when the funding that we secured in 2002 was um, passed by the voters of Montana overwhelmingly. From that point through about 2006, we've been able to work. Um, this program has been able to, you know, do all sorts of things in counter marketing um, to counter the marketing that the tobacco industry does. Um, media literacy cessation for those who want to quit. And and then also help to pass local policies um, around tobacco. As a result, we've seen a 70% reduction in youth use of cigarettes. That's huge. Um, this is a proven effective program that um, is following the model and because of the work that they're doing, we are seeing significant reductions in youth use and why that's important is that 90% of all long term um, tobacco users started before the age of 18 and 50% start between 12 and 15 because that's the sweet spot for the tobacco industry. They know if they hook you when you're a child, when your brain's developing, they pretty much got you for life. So this is a highly effective program. Lynn, you have a question. I do. Are they still getting their their um, the results and finding the numbers? Like you said, 70% uh, reduction rate. Are they still getting those um, results from the Montana Youth Risk Behavior Survey? Mm -hmm. Yes. Wondering. Yeah. They are. Yeah. So uh, there's other um, uh, benchmarks that we've hit besides just the youth use of cigarettes. We've also seen a 50% reduction in overall consumption of cigarettes. Um, we've seen significant reductions in American Indian and American Indian youth, which is especially important, their rates as well. Um, so overall, this is an amazing investment and I don't expect you to have all of those those nuggets, but to know, you know, to be able to articulate that this has been highly effective um, and that it's it's an important investment, especially now that we're seeing such a significant rise in e-cigarette use among our um, our youth. E-cigarette use, regular e-cigarette use among among teens in Montana is at 30%. It's incredibly high, and so in fact that's higher than youth use of cigarettes when I first started 20 years ago. Um, and so there is so much more that needs to be done and and why the legislature needs to continue to invest. One, the voters want it. They, they don't want to just be paying for the expenses of the death and disease caused by tobacco. They want to be preventing it. So we're not kicking the can down the road and we're, we're not paying some of those expenses. We want to prevent that death and disease. Um, where was I going to? OK, so sorry, I'm just trying to figure out what my next point was going to be. Um, yeah, so we're, what we're wanting is for them to invest in that um, program so that we can continue to not only counter because you know tobacco the tobacco is a legal product they continue to market it's enticing to our youth so you can't just even though we've had great success we still need to lower youth and adult rates um, and it, as long as they have marketing dollars significant mar marketing dollars and i think it's like 30 million in montana um, we're going to need this program especially to address the youth epidemic of e-cigarette use. Any questions or anything that any of our leaders would like to add to that? Okay, so the second um, ask we're asking is 
to oppose two bills that are before the legislature and they're at different places in in the legislative process um one bill would would um, prevent local communities from passing any policies having to do with um e-products like um e-cigarettes vape products um electric electronic smoking devices is what we call them. And um, it would not only prevent local communities from working on those type of pieces of legislation, it would ret be retroactive. So it would remove several um, policies that are already on the books. And that's House Bill 137. And um, yeah, it would, it would, um, roll back at least 11 policies in the state of Montana. And we will be providing you a fact sheet that lists some of those communities. So if if your county is one of those counties, be sure to mention that as well. Um, some of those counties are Lewis and Clark, so Helena, Sanders County, County, Powell, Carbon, Granite, Yellowstone, Lake County, Missoula County, Deer Lodge, Gallatin, Mineral counties. Those are the ones that have um you know restriction that that local communities have um ended the sale of flavored products or addressed e-cigarettes in some form or fashion and then the second bill is house bill 106 that was just heard today and by the way lois um, fitzpatrick did an amazing job today with her testimony thank you lois um, House Bill 106 will, um, I guess I didn't take it off the printer, w basically pre prevents local communities from strengthening or improving upon the existing Clean Indoor Air Act. Well, the Clean Indoor Air Act was passed in 2005 before e-cigarettes were really a hot item on the market. Um, and so many communities are, you know, because of the evidence of the harms of exposure to the aerosol em aerosol emitted off of e-cigarettes, they're going in and passing local policies that pro that prohibit use of those products indoors, just like we did years ago in on smoking product or yeah, cigarettes. And um, this bill would prevent any further work like that. If there's a new to tobacco product that comes on the market, it would prevent us from um, prohibiting the use of those indoors. And it would it would roll back all 11 clean indoor air local smoke free, local policies that address e-cigarettes. So these are just really not productive policies. And, you know, our second ask will be to ask them to oppose those bills. Now we're, you know, a week and a half out. We're we're not sure today where those bills will be in the legislative process. So right before we go out, Saturday we're going to have conversations and we can give you an update then or right before we um, have our cancer action day, we will for sure give you updates of whether we're asking for a vote no on just one of those bills or two of those bills. Um, but we'll give you um, all of the information you need on that. Any questions? Or things that you think we should have covered, Carrie and Lois and Leah? Jody? <laughs> so when are you going to send out the uh, information on these? Good question. Um, I will be sending, we, we will be sending those out early next week. Okay. Yep, so you'll have plenty of time to read through them and be able to ask us questions. Um, we'll be available to ask any questions um, for you. But, and just remember, even though there's gonna be lots of data on these fact sheets, you don't need to be the expert. Just need to know the overall um, feel of the, those bills. Yeah but we, we need to have a good, good grasp on them just so we can visit about them. Absolutely, yeah. for sure. Any other questions? Lois has her hand raised. 
Oh, Lois. The important thing is that you're there, you're telling your story, you're telling them the bills that we are concerned about, you're telling them why MTUP is so important. Um, but I do want to say that any of these bills, 137 or 106, they're in two different committees, um, could get onto the House floor, could possibly pass, I hope not, but they could, and they send it over to the Senate. So. Those talk talking points are important for your senators, depending on where those bills are. So just want to make that point. Yeah, and we'll we'll be looking at who you're, you know, scheduled to talk with and we'll make sure that you have what the ask would be if it, you're on the Senate side talking to your senator or if you're talking to your house. So very good point, Lois. Yes. And while I just have a few seconds, does everybody is it is anybody not um, familiar with the legislative process? Because we can provide um, a fact sheet on how a bill becomes a law. I don't think we have time to really talk about that here, but um, we we can definitely provide that to you if you would like just to learn more about how that happens. OK, I am kicking it over to I'm going to kick it back to Jody and have her MC. All right, um, thanks, Kristen. Um, now it is my pleasure to introduce Carrie Yoder, our state lead ambassador and Leah Zins, who is our act lead. Um, they are part of our leadership team and are going to talk a little bit more about um, a, a way to tell your story and make the ask. So let me share their slides here and I'm going to be running their slides. Um, oopsie, not those. And you guys, I bet, aren't looking at them yet, are you? No, nope. let me try again. All right, give me just um. Here we go. Yeah, look, give me one moment to um, make the slideshow start from the beginning, and then I'm gonna mute and turn it over to Carrie and Leah. All right. So as Jody said, um, I am Carrie Yoder. I'm the state lead ambassador. Um, for Montana, and I am joined tonight with Leah Zins, our ACT lead for Montana. Um, we are going to talk to you about hook um, sinker, line sinker. Um, it is a new and updated version. If you've been with us before of our um, hook line sinker, so it is um, Great to have you guys all with us tonight. I want to thank Leah for um, working hard to put these uh, slides together um, and make them look amazing. So thank you, Leah. Um, and I just want to let you guys know that um, four, four years ago, <clears throat> I attended my first leadership or my first cancer action day and um, didn't think I could do these meetings, um, didn't have any confidence whatsoever, but ACS can provide you the training and the tools to get, um, to get this done and we will support you however we can with, with the tools and the training and all of the talking points. So let's get this started. So they definitely want to hear from you. Um, I know Leah and I have lots of stories that we can share about our um, <clears throat> leadership summit and lobby day, um, but it it really is about our stories. Um, they are really interested in hearing how cancer and tobacco and any of these um, priorities that we work on, how it truly affects us and our families. So 
um, it is a lot harder for us to interact with our elected officials, but we get it done. Um, Leah and I were able to participate along with Kristen and Jody in our virtual leadership summit and lobby day this fall with our three um, congressmen and it it went fine other than we weren't in the actual offices it was just like any other um, leadership summit and lobby day so it's it's truly um it's just i think it's a piece of cake so we're just we're not all sitting together um and the average time for most of the calls is 15 to 20 minutes but sometimes they're shorter than that um you'll be able to practice what you want to say in advance you'll be no, you'll know um who will be speaking and in what order and you just you want to keep it short um because it it seems the longer a meeting goes on the less attention you um have from from your legislator next slide jody um, Leah, do you want to talk about the flow of the meeting? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so like Carrie said, this is a little bit different than maybe than what we have done in the past. So before it was hook, line, sinker. So we kind of snuck in that other snick, sinker right after that introduction. So the reason for this is the virtual meeting, you know, like it can be, um, it's just a little bit different than having that face-to-face -face interaction. And so kind of right away, um, when we're talking to our legislator, we want to make sure that we're getting the, um, the ask, the policy that we're talking about kind of right out there, um, right away. Um, so we will first um, do an introduction. So a volunteer for ACS can, um, you know, we're all here can just say that we're meeting with um, nearly every member of the Montana legislator or, or, you know, that's what our goal is. Um, and then go right into into the asks of just like really quickly reviewing them. So we're going to be supporting the Montana um, tobacco use prevention program and then asking them to vote no on um, these two House bills. Um, and so really, really where um, the emotional part of the um, maybe conversation and really um, some of the most meaningful part is in the line. This is where we're, we're talking about our story. So, you know, it, it really is important to um, just kind of make some notes beforehand. You know, you know what your story is, you know why you're passionate and you know why you're here. Um, and it can be incredibly helpful to just jot some of those things down beforehand. And especially um, to work and try to connect it to, to these asks um, and just, you know, preserving the MTAP funding that addresses the public health crisis. You know, why Why is this um, funding so, um, so critical? And why are these policies so important for cancer prevention? And so kind of working, um, working that and relating it to your story as best you can. Um, and then making the ask again. And so here's where we're gonna directly ask the legislator, um, you know, will you, um, support in this increase of funding and will you vote no on these two house bills and so um, again we'll have more of the bullet points um, and then here's just we're going to just break down a little bit um, of each of the pieces so again the hook is introductions so who you are where you're from like especially connecting it if you're one of their constituents like you know i'm one of your constituents like you know making that really a connection um, and then introducing anybody else that is in the group um, next slide do you want to take this one carrie sure so um again the sinker is is our ask so we want to continue the funding of the public health and safety division budget dedicated to the tobacco prevention and cessation um, it continues to be a wise investment um, and then to vote no on house bill 106 and house bill 137 to keep the clean local 
keep the local clean air policies that protect the health of nearly 500,000 Montanans. So, and then um, the line. So this, this is where you get to tell your story, why you are here um, advocating um, with your legislator about um, cancer and making it a priority. So you know why you're here. You know your cancer connection. You know the asks and you have your talking points. Um, I, I just tell people to just practice, practice, practice. Um, I sat on a panel yesterday and told them that some of the best advice I ever got um, for speaking in front of the committees and telling my story to my legislators is to tell your story to everybody that you know. Tell it to your significant other, tell it to your children, tell it to when you're in the bathroom, taking a shower, whoever will listen. Um, just practice it so that it becomes second nature. Everybody's going to be tired of hearing you tell your story, but at least you have it down. And um, it's yeah, it's just a really great way to get to get that story practice. So next slide, Jody. Um, and while you're telling your personal story, that's when you can connect it to the importance of the asks. So that's that's really important. And then finally, um, the sinker again. So we'll make that ask again. You know, after we've told them our story and why it's important, um, we ask them if we can count on your opposition to House Bill 106 and House Bill 137. And can we count on your support of continued funding for the Montana Tobacco Use Prevention Program to 6.52 million in order to address the youth e-cigarette epidemic? And Next. One thing, um, just really quickly, one thing that Jody, this is something you, an advice piece of advice you always give that I think is really, really wonderful is after you ask the question, quiet. And it can be really hard and really awkward, but you're like forcing them to actually answer you and, and like think about it and like, you know, not just like moving along with the conversation. And so like you're truly asking them and truly waiting for an answer at that part. Yep, good advice. But now, yeah. Oh, I think you're on mute. There we go. Is there any background information that we need to know? I mean, is MTUP funding being considered at being, you know, eliminated or not funded completely or what's the history on that i guess that's such a great question are you guys okay with me answering that yes kristen yes so um <clears throat> because it's it's a legislative year where revenue projections are not as good as they once were the good news is they're not as bad as they were originally projecting but anytime that revenue projections are looking unfavorable like um that their ending fund balance is is going to be low they go after um, funds especially in health and human services and especially for preemption prevention um, because they're not dollars that are matched with medicaid and so there's been a history over several sessions where they've gone after these funds um, <laughs> And they haven't for years, but we suspect that that could happen. We have heard rumors um, in the halls, and that's why you see the language is we'd like you to continue supporting um, this program that's housed in Health and Human Services because they don't really get to vote on a line item um, for prevention, but um, we're really, you know, trying to reinforce how efficient and effective this program is um, instead of just another big government program like um, some of the more conservative legislators like to 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 label it as
So for example, Lynn, um, <laughs> my, it, um, in 2001, um, the current governor cut the funding of this program by 85%. And we, over the next election cycle, ran a citizens initiative to, to um, secure capture master settlement funds for that program to you know re make sure that that program not only recovered but had adequate funding so and then a few years later there were other attempts to try to cut the program as of late there hasn't been many but we've we've heard rumblings you know folks some of the legislators who don't like government um don't like that um, work is being done at the local level on local policies, and so they are trying to go after this program. Lois, did you have a question? Carrie, actually, I had a couple of comments. Um, one is when you're talking with your legislator, if, if they're relaxed enough, don't don't hesitate to ask them if they have a cancer story and then note it down because that helps us when we're dealing with legislators to know that their grandmother had cancer or their their you know staff member had cancer and it's very helpful for us it also builds a connection between you and the legislator and then make sure to note it so that that Carrie and Kristen and Jody know about it Also, during that silent run forever, then ask them, do you need more information? Find out what they think they need and get it back to Kristen and to Jody so that they can get the information to them. And on the um, MTUP, uh, in the hearing on 106 today, uh, Representative Marshall, who was sponsoring that bill, was saying that, you know, those things that the money has been uh, taken away from from MTUP and the master settlement, and it should be put back into it. So that might be something we can work. That's all. Um, so um, I think we'll go on um, to the um review the flow um so i think we know um the hook is where the meeting leader will introduce um the group you'll tell them you know where you're from um i'm carrie yoder i live in east helena montana um i volunteer with acs can and we are here meeting with nearly every member of the montana legislator legislature during our cancer action day um, to start us off quickly today, I just want to review our asks. Um, we would ask that you support Governor Jim Forte's plan to add an additional one million to increase funding for the Montana Tobacco Use Prevention Program and to vote no on House Bill 106 and 137 to keep local clean air policies um, that protect the health of nearly 500,000 Montanans. Um, then we'll go on and tell our story. Um, so <clears throat> I am the caregiver to um, a cancer survivor, a former um, smoker, and I lost a brother to a tobacco um, related illness. So that is why I am here today. Um, you know, I want you to preserve MTEP because it addresses the public health crisis um, and is <clears throat> affecting um, the health of the youth of Montana. Um, and again, then we're going to make that ask for them to support um, the Mon Montana Tobacco Use Prevention Program. Uh, next slide. Um, so please avoid um, talking over each other. Um, don't, um, you know, try not to interrupt each other. We, we all um, will get a chance to talk during these, these meetings. Um, so 
we want to be respectful of each other's time that we've given during the day. Um, follow in the order which you guys um, have agreed to speak if you're going in as a group. Um, you know, I think we're all pretty used to doing these virtual meetings, but we have to remember to mute ourselves um, to avoid the distracting background noise. Um, try not to move around during the meetings. And if you're not the one speaking, um, make sure to take notes. Um, the notes that are taken, um, we will use <clears throat> and turn in um, to Kristen and Jody and other staff members to talk about how those meetings went and if we find out um, any important information about how they might vote um, or if they'll support our asks. Um, so any any questions? I just wanted to point out um, the ask for the tobacco funding and and this isn't isn't um, Carrie's fault. There was some confusion on the draft of the of this presentation. This year we were thinking about asking for a million dollar increase because there's some new money going into the settlement, but unfortunately um, we th we feel like it's just politically because of the revenue projections that we should just ask for preserving um, this highly the funding for this highly effective program. Sorry about that, Carrie. No, I um so do you, Carrie and, and Leah, do you now that we can I don't know if you guys could see each other during that, but I could only just see the slides, so it's nice to see your faces again. And um uh do you guys want a model for us? You know, um do you know do a fake a uh, little uh um pretend ask? Is that something you guys are willing to do for us this evening? Sure. Um, did, did you did you practice or um, is that not something we were going to do? No. Um, I mean, I guess, you know, I just I I think, you know, I think I want to share just a really important story. Um, and Leah and I talked about this earlier. Um, why it is so important for us to share our stories. Um, so in, 20, <clears throat> in 2019, Leah and I um, and Jody were back in Washington, D.C. Um, doing our Leadership Summit and Lobby Day, and we were meeting with Senator Daines and it was a very unusual meeting. We did not meet in his office. We actually met in a room down next to the Senate um, floor. It's one of those fancy rooms that you always see on TV with um, hundreds of people milling about. And this is actually where we had to have our meeting because they were getting ready to do a Senate vote. And so it was a little overwhelming. It was very overwhelming. It was very scary because we had been rushed from his office. Um, we had to ride the, the underground uh, subway to the Capitol building and rush up to that um, meeting room <laughs> through the Capitol. Um, and we get there and we are huddled in this little group um to meet with the senator and i thought it would not be a very productive meeting but as soon as leah started sharing her story he became so engaged he leaned over and was listening to leah's story and was blocking everything else out that was going on around and it was just it was so amazing to see because I just thought it was just going to be, yep, he'd nod his head and say, thanks for coming to DC to meet with me. But he actually engaged. He asked questions. Yeah. Um, Leah, I don't know what you would like to share. Absolutely. I mean, and that was my first time going out to DC and just to experience like the power of 
you know, this is why we're here is like to share to share why we spend the time, to, why we consider this to be so important. And that is like something that I think, yeah, that just to remember going into this is to be yourself, to share your story and, and they will, you'll make a connection in one way or another. And the, you know, the next time around that we talked to Senator Danes, it was like, kind of like we were taught, talking to an old friend, you know, like he was way more open. He like shared a cancer connection of his own. You know, it, it really did kind of, it can break through maybe a relationship that you weren't expecting to have and, you know, really create that. So, um, yeah. I think that, yeah, going into it, the most, the, the thing that you want to remember is, yeah, practicing your story, connecting it with the asks, and just not overthinking it and you know, as well. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, we always <clears throat> sometimes go in with maybe just a little bit of a bias when we go into some of these meetings, um, and we really have to leave those at the door. And remember, um, you know, that we're going in to to educate them on the importance of our asks and our stories. Um, so we have to remember to be very respectful. Um, don't don't ever try to argue or debate with them. Um, you know, it doesn't it doesn't get us anywhere. Um, we just you know, we just try and be as res respectful as possible. Um, if we have to just take a minute and let everybody catch their catch their breath and try and figure out how um, you know how we how we can work together and definitely you know know that they they are um, willing to listen to your stories. So yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I think one thing that we talked about too is, you know, sometimes you have to you have to problem solve on the fly, um, which can be difficult. Um, but like I said, it's again just stepping back, taking that step back, um, taking a breath, and just trying to figure out how how you can reengage with them. So because. The, the ones that are that are in the middle that really haven't made a decision, um, they can be some of the tougher meetings that you'll have. And, you know, that makes me think, Carrie, um, I just want to add, you know, if you don't know the answer, it's OK to be like, wow, that's a really great question. I don't know the answer. Yeah. Um, but I will find out and follow up with you. And uh, and those kinds of questions are actually the best because they give us an opportunity to engage that legislator again, right? Yes. With accurate information about um, whatever question they had. And yeah, you know, it allows you to strengthen that relationship. It allows Kristen to go back in and, um, you know, and engage them in their question and and you know you know, um it gives her an opportunity to move them as well so um just remember you don't have to know all the answers and you can defer and be like let me get back to you because that does create opportunities for us to continue to build that relationship um yep. yeah yep. and anything else i want to um i want to do one thing but i don't want to cut anything off um, and, and the one thing I want to do is just um, review three slides that will um, show you what the platform that we're going to use looks like um, for Saturday and Monday and um, just a little bit how to use them. It'll, it'll take probably a, you know, a minute and 30 seconds tops, maybe a little more if you guys have questions, but I don't want to interrupt this really important um, part of our conversation. Lois or Kristen, do you have anything to add to? You're muted. Thank you. I just wanted to thank you, Carrie and Leah, for for doing this um, 
you're pros. <laughs> you guys um, really are not only good at, at at building relationships with lawmakers and making these asks. I think you do a fantastic job of sharing your knowledge with other volunteers in a way that's not intimidating. And I really appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. All and right. I would also add that part of the reason why they're so effective is because they're so, they don't put on airs. They are themselves. And that's the important thing. And you know, if, if you get emotional, don't worry about it. Um, that They need to see that also. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so that, you know, just be yourselves. Yeah, I, um, I can't. I can't tell you how many times I have cried during testimony, during committee he hearings, or talking to a legislator. Um, you know, it seems like I should be able to tell my story without having or showing any emotion, but I'm human, I'm genuine, and it just, it creeps up. And so, yep, don't, don't ever be worried about showing emotion while you're, while you're talking to a legislator. And we're here to kind of put that human face on on these numbers, on these things that we talk about, on the policies. It's like we humanize them, we bring it down to a level where, you know, where they take away that emotional piece. And that's what they remember when they go to vote. That's what they're thinking about. So. Thank you, ladies. All right. One more slide share opportunity here. Um, let me get it together and yeah, I'm going to try one more time. All right, here we go. Can you guys see that? All right, we're going to start this slideshow from the beginning. So, um, we, uh, re a really exciting new feature of this virtual event is um, uh, the Windrose media platform that we're going to be using to help us um, engage during our Cancer Action Day and week. Um, um, it is a Zoom platform. Sorry, I just lost my train of thought for a second. But really, the most important thing for you guys to remember is it is a Zoom platform and it works a lot like zoom so um tomorrow late in the afternoon expect an email from me it will have this link that you see at the top um and you take that link and you um put it in your um your uh your bar and it'll take you to a page that looks exactly like this cancer action day 2021 um and it will require you to enter your email address you need to use the email address that you registered with. If you're unsure, um, shoot me a message. I will help you solve that problem. Um, if you're having difficulty, you will find at the top of the, um, at the very top of the uh, page, a help support button. Um, and you can use that to connect to um, Windrose Media's uh, staff that will help you. That is the vendor. Um, so once you get signed in, ignore this, um, uh, ignore the sort of the, the tab at the top that says Arizona. There will be no tab. It will say Montana. And then there will be an, uh, a welcome note from us along with a message from our president, Lisa LaCaf. Um, I strongly encourage you to watch it. I, um, it's really, um, it's really inspirational and it, it certainly made me cry. Um, so I encourage you to watch it again at the top. You'll see there's a help support button just in case you have um, trouble once you get um, into this platform. Uh, you'll see little blue bubbles and um, if you click on those bubbles, you'll see they'll open um, um, there. As you see here, there will be four bubbles. There'll be a pre trend, um, pre event training one, uh, an event kickoff one for lawmaker meetings, and one for our wrap-up event. So on the day of the event, just come here to Windrose Media, sign in, go to event kickoff, 
click that Zoom link and that will take you to our kickoff event on Monday morning, the pre-event volunteer training that we're doing again on Saturday, um, February 6th at 10.30. Uh, you'll go um, to that top bubble, you'll click on that, you'll find the link to participate there. Um, and I think if I go to the next one, ooh, what I didn't say and you can read right here is that um, after the um, sessions end, you will find the recordings um, in their appropriate places and all of the relevant material. So you'll be able to go here and find um, our asks um, and all of the um, backup information you need to have a successful meeting with your legislator. Um, and then, yeah, here we go. Finally, um, when we get these uh, legislator meetings scheduled, I will reach out to you. And if you get them scheduled, you'll reach out to me. I will work with Widrows to get that information to them. You'll just go to lawmaker meetings um, when it's time for that meeting. Oh, curses. Um, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but click into the filter button so you can just be like, um, you can type the name or the house number. I have them by both. So, um, and once we get meetings set up, I do believe I'll also be able to put your name next to um, your legislator meeting. And then you would just go to say house, um, say you're meeting with uh, um, house district number 33. Um, you'd find that the information will sit right here. Um, right, it'll tell you the meeting time and then you can click on that Zoom link and uh, um, participate in the meeting. But as you can see, please don't click on that Zoom link um, until shortly before the meeting, because if you go in early to test it and you close that Zoom link, the link will become inactive and we'll have to reschedule the meeting. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so. Um, I'm going to end the show so I can see your faces again. And um, and just check if you guys have any questions about um, the platform you just saw. Does it look pretty easy to use? <laughs> yep. Good. We sure do hope so. Um, one thing I like to do is when I get, you know, when I get the registration link from Jody, it'll come from you, right, Jody? That's correct. Is I will um, go there just to check it out, but then I'll save it as, you know, bookmark it um, on my favorites bar so that it's just easy to find the day of because you don't want to be looking through emails the day of. You want to just have it somewhere where it's easy to access. Excellent. And, you know, and, you know problems will happen. We'll have some technical difficulties. We'll try to work through them the best we can. But just also know that you are allowed to use your own noggin and to troubleshoot. So like, say something happens and the Zoom platform just doesn't work. It's okay to, you know, text your legislator and say, hey, can we meet just on phone? Hopefully that won't happen. Um, but I just want you guys to not panic if something happens with the technology. I don't and envision it, but we just just need to be ha have good moxie. And we're here to help too. solve your problems. If, um, if you do panic, uh, we're here to help. So in I just want to end this um, by encouraging you guys. So it went a little longer and we were going to do some practice. We're going to break out into some rooms and practice, but I feel like in, um, you know, um, because we said we would only take an hour of your time, I want to honor that and give you three minutes of your life back and just encourage you to, like Carrie and Leah said, think about your story and how it relates to um, tobacco policy, right? Practice, practice, practice. Tell your dog practice in the shower. Yeah, like Carrie said, tell your husband a million times, right, till he um, can't stand it. And, um, and, and come to our next training that's happening February 6th at 1030 on Saturday, um, just so you can hear this all again, and you'll feel more confident about, about your meetings. So last thoughts, guys? 
Should I hang up? Yeah, if any questions do kind of pop up, um, please just reach out. You know, we're here before, before, during, after. Um, so yeah, if any questions come up. Um, and I see Keely, you have your hand raised and we'd love to hear from you. Just unmute yourself. Hi, um, yeah, thank you. I joined like three minutes late, so I don't know if you already addressed this, but I was just wondering if you were um, rescheduling uh, last week's meeting that got canceled? Oh, that's a fantastic question. And we are going to reschedule that. Um, you know what, as a team, we haven't decided because we um, need to include Noe um, in that. We haven't been able to pin her down. We're thinking about either doing it, um, what, like a Thursday night series like this one, we would keep it to 45 minutes. Um, either, I don't have my calendar in front of me, either the, next. The fourth, ahead, the fourth, the fourth of February was, um, yeah, the, the suggestion that was thrown out. Um, so yeah, we're, we're keeping our fingers crossed that we can, we can have it before our lobby day. Right. Or so for our cancer can. action day. Yep. So we can do um, letters to the editor after our our action day. But that's a fantastic question. So thank you for asking. Yep. We'll, okay. Thank you. Yep. yep. We'll let you guys know as soon as as we've got it nailed down as a team. So. So thanks for showing up and being here. Um, thank we look you. Forward, yeah. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Okay, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.